welcome to Scope, where you can enjoy science in the comfort of your own home. Speaking of which, sit down and relax because we've got a huge episode ahead all about homes and habitats. Southern brown bandicoots are cute and curious creatures. They love to explore and are known for their pointy snout, round rump and short furry tail. But these marsupials are endangered, so we formed a group to help restore their habitat and hopefully their numbers. Hi, I'm Jasmine. And I'm Fraser. And thanks to this bandicoot conservation project, we're hoping to save these little guys from extinction. Southern brown bandicoots like to live in scrubby, dense vegetation, which provides plenty of protection from predators. They also love to munch on insects, worms, lizards, berries, plants, and even truffle fungi. Over the past 10 years, our group's been focusing on bandicoots that live near Adelaide in the Mount Lofty Ranges. Bandicoot numbers in this area have been on a steady decline. Over the years, they've become restricted to isolated populations in and around small patches of dense native vegetation. Their drop in numbers could be due to a number of reasons. This includes predators like cats and foxes, together with a loss of native habitat due to humans, animals, weeds and changes in climate. So to help us help them, we've been surveying the different populations. We've been assessing their health and genetics and setting up cameras in the wild to capture their activity. These cameras have heat and motion sensors that are able to take a picture when the sensors are triggered. The surveys are giving us a better idea of what their ideal habitat is, where their populations are, and the genetic diversity or isolation of the populations. We've been improving the quality of bandicoot habitats by removing weeds from areas with dense native vegetation. But in more open areas, we have to be careful to leave thickets of weeds, like blackberry. That's because it provides a good source of food and shelter for the bandicoots, where there is no native habitat available. And this careful weeding maintains links between native areas to encourage different groups of bandicoots to mix. We've also been setting up what we like to call bandicoot bungalows, which will act as a home base for the animals where there's not enough native habitat. To make these eco-friendly bungalows, we use a wooden pallet which is laid on the ground. Then we add branches, grass and sticks to the top to provide a form of shelter. We now plan to put out more cameras and bungalows in habitats where bandicoots have been recorded before. This will give us better data on their current activity levels. It will also tell us whether the bandicoot bungalows are being used. That way, if they're not, we can work on our designs further to make them even more appealing. So thanks to a team effort, we're doing our part to ensure the survival of the southern brown bandicoots, like Milo.